If the patient or a third person holds a pathological sample such as cancer tissue, the O-ring will open, if the patient has the same cancer tissue. Let's use the O-ring test to see if Yusuke has cancer or precancer of his stomach. Dr. Shimotsuura is holding prepared specimens of stomach cancer tissue on a slide. He will place these on Yusuke and conduct the test. If Yusuke has stomach cancer, the O-ring will open. If he does not, the O-ring will not open. Let's do the test. The O-ring will not open at all, which shows that Yusuke does not have stomach cancer. Let's explain this again in plain English. There is a patient with an illness in his or her internal organs. First, we place a microscope slide containing liver cancer tissue on the patient's arm or palm and conduct the O-ring test. If the O-ring test does not open, the patient does not have liver cancer. Next, we do the same with stomach cancer tissue. If the O-ring opens, the patient is diagnosed as having a high probability of stomach cancer or pre-cancer. With prepared specimens of various pathogenic bacteria or monoclonal antibodies of various viruses, tests can be conducted on the patient and the type of causative pathogenic microorganism can be identified. Dr. Omura discovered that by holding a prepared specimen of a type of normal body tissue, the outline of the internal organs can be mapped out on the body surface by using the biodigital O-ring test. Let's map out Yusuke's stomach. Of course, the assistant is holding a prepared glass microscope slide containing a specimen of normal stomach tissue. Moving the metal electrode a little at a time, a mark is made on each spot where the O-ring opens markedly, but does not open when moved even a millimetre outward. Within 15 minutes, Yusuke's stomach has been mapped out. This is a patient's stomach that was mapped out using the O-ring test. A piece of copper wire is placed along the outline of the mapped stomach. This is the x-ray of that patient's stomach as we just saw it. It's hard to see if you're not a specialist, but apparently the metal wire is in just about the same position as the stomach shown on the x-ray film. What you have just seen demonstrate was the application of resonance phenomena between two identical substances to map internal organs without using high-tech equipment. A few days ago, this patient complained of back and stomach aches. An x-ray was taken and it was found that there were stones in the kidney and in the ureter. Here, an examination is being carried out to monitor the progress of the illness. Using the O-ring test, the kidney and the ureter are being mapped out on the patient's body surface. The two large blue spots mark the current location of the kidney stones. Do you see the narrow section towards the bottom? Mm, there's a mark there. That's where the stone is? Yes, the stone is stuck there. It can't move? Because it can't move any further, its upper part has become enlarged. There is one here in the middle of the kidney. And another is here in the ureter. Because it is stuck, the upper part of the ureter has become enlarged and the inflammation can be seen in the kidney as well. This area here. You mean the folds? This is the kidney. And as you can see, compared to the other side, this kidney is enlarged. Also, since this was taken when the pain began, there are two stones, here and here. These are the stones, aren't they? Yes. They've probably moved down further to here by now. Ah, because they are stuck here, the areta has enlarged. Yes, that's right. With the O-ring test, when the ring opens, there is very little strength in the muscles. Do the muscles really lose their strength?
This patient has agreed to help with this experiment to see whether muscle strength actually drops. What is the apparatus we will be using? As you've just seen, we read the change in strength in the fingers as the computerized pulling mechanism decreases the pressure it puts on the O-ring. The computer monitors the change. One, two, three. First, the strength in the assistant's fingers is measured in a normal situation. There will be slight differences, so it is repeated five times. This time it was 6.6 .6 kilograms. One, two, three. Seven kilograms. It's basically around the 6.5 to 7 kilogram range. That's right. This is a graph showing the results of the five trials. This time, you will carry out the same experiment using a prepared specimen. Yes, that's right. This is a prepared specimen of ulcerative colitis tissue. This patient has been hospitalized for ulcerative colitis. The assistant holds the prepared specimen and Please take the electroconductive rod. If the prepared specimen and the patient's illness match, muscle strength will drop. One, two, three. Again, this is done five times. What are the results? The red lines are the results when the prepared specimen was held. Compared to the white lines, the control, it can be seen that muscle strength decreased. Now we will do the experiment again, this time with the patient. First, the control. Next, with the patient pointing to his colon with a bamboo rod. The results, as can be seen, show that even though there are slight variations, there was a clear drop in muscle strength. We just used the device to find out whether muscle strength actually drops. It clearly showed that it is not a mere coincidence. They naturally open, don't they? So with the results of the bi-digital O-ring test, and the results of tests using current technology, there is a good correlation between the two. But to what degree is O-ring test reliable in the diagnosis of illnesses? Although the concept and procedure are simple, the results are remarkably accurate, consistent and can be obtained quickly. So what we're going to do is, first have Yusuke and another patient undergo the bi-digital O-ring test, then have tests using current diagnostic methods. After that, we will compare the results of both sets of tests and see how accurate they are.